Please stand for the entrance antiphon. Behold, now she follows the Lamb who was crucified for us, powerful in virginity, modesty her offering, a sacrifice on the altar of chastity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This, more, this evening's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Louis Rebicek. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, otherwise known as Gaudate. And as we heard in our entrance, for, entrance entiphon, we hear to rejoice, and it's exactly what that means. Gaudate means to rejoice. We're midway in our Advent preparation to the birthday of Christ, and so we are called to rejoice. So we light our third candle, and it's a pink candle, as I'm wearing pink also today, a sign once again of our uh, rejoicing in this season of Advent as we prepare for Christmas. And this, season, this candle is known as the shepherd's candle. Each candle represents the journey towards Christ. The first one was the prophets foretelling Christ. The second was the Bethlehem candle as Mary and Joseph make their way to Bethlehem. And the third represents the shepherds as they make their way to rejoice in the birth of the Advent King. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation, he has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. My soul rejoices in my God. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, 
remembering his mercy, my soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything, hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man, a man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well, then they asked, are you Elijah? I'm not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him, why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me and I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, I still remember the feeling of expectation in these weeks leading up to Christmas when I was a child, of not knowing quite what Santa would bring and what my parents would buy me. And it was a, uh, it was a real, real tangible feeling of excitement and joy. And this Sunday, we are called also to, to, to experience that joy once again. One thing we, we, we know is that there was this sense of expectation before Jesus was born. There was this sense in which someone was going to come that was going to do extraordinary things. And they even had a name for it, for, which was in, in ancient uh, Hebrew was Mashiach, meaning Messiah. They knew this Messiah was going to come. And you can hear in this Gospel of John that they're so full of expectation that this Messiah was going to come. They think John is the Messiah, the one who is to come. And they, they ask him these questions, and he's humble enough um, and honest enough to say, no, I'm not the one. I know you, you're desperate to, to meet the one that is coming, but it's not me. I'm just, pre just preparing the ground for the one who is to come. Now, when, when Jesus finally came, 
he stands up in a synagogue and he preaches. Now, when a, a rabbi would, would, would preach, he'd choose a text. I don't choose these texts that I read, that we read um, tonight and over the, 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 the weekends. No, these readings are given to me. But rabbis would, would look through the Bible and find a text that they wanted to preach on. And Jesus preached on, the, his very first homily was on Isaiah, the reading we've just heard. And he stood up and he said, this is who I am, who Isaiah prophesied about, that's me, it's me. Now, some people believed him and some didn't. But what did Isaiah prophesy about Jesus? Because Isaiah was one of those people who desperately wanted this Mashiach, this Messiah to come. And so, what does he say about him? Well, we hear that in our first reading today. This Messiah is going to bring good news to the poor. Now, there are some people who believe that when Isaiah prophesied this, and when Jesus repeated these words about himself, that, that Jesus was indeed coming for the poor, for those who were completely marginalized, who were penniless. Indeed, we hear in the Beatitudes, Jesus say, blessed are the poor. So he did reach out to those who were economically poor. We know he did. And he reached out to them and, and, and helped them. But also Jesus, if we listen to the Beatitudes clearly, he says, happy are the poor in spirit. Now, who are the poor in spirit? Well, we might put ourselves in that category after this terrible year. All of us may have felt at some point, well, you know, where is God in all of this? And sometimes we become poor in spirit, little in spirit, in that we sometimes start to lose faith, maybe. And Jesus came amongst the people just at the right time and said, I am here. I am Emmanuel. I am God with you. And maybe we feel like that this evening. And so I would say on this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudate Sunday, I would say rejoice. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, God is with us. He hasn't forgotten us. And so when Jesus stood up and he said this, and he said, I am the fulfillment of this prophecy, they would have rejoiced. That's what we're called to do now. So if you feel poor and poor in spirit, our Lord says, I am with you. I have not forgotten you. Now, the second part of this prophecy from Isaiah about Jesus, that Jesus says, this is me, is he will bind up hearts that are broken. Now, if you've ever, ever had a broken heart, you'll know how that feels. Jesus here is speaking of the heart that is the core of you. That's, for the Latin for heart is core. And literally, that's when we say heart, we don't literally mean the physical heart. We mean the core of you, the essence of you. And if your essence, your spirit has been broken, then our Lord says, I want to come and heal you. Sometimes it's, we're, we're broken because of things we've said and done. We've found ourselves um, in situations where we never thought we'd find ourselves and our hearts have been broken for all kinds of reasons. Our Lord is a healer. He wants to come and mend that broken heart. Now, the, the next thing that, that Isaiah prophesies about the Messiah is that he will proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to those in prison. Sometimes we feel imprisoned because of who we've become, or maybe a, a pattern of behavior that we're just not happy about, things we do and we wish we didn't do, and we've, it's embedded in us, and we feel we can't break out of this sort of way of being, maybe reacting too quickly when someone uh, hurts us, or reacting too quickly when we feel our dignity is, uh, is being attacked, or whatever it might be. 
whatever your poison is, as they say. And we feel, no, we just can't get out of doing whatever we're doing. Our Lord says, I have come to set you free. If you feel imprisoned by something, our Lord says, ask and I will give it to you. Now, one of the the fourth thing that Isaiah prophesies is he will proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. Now, the year of favor within um, the Jewish society was known as the Jubilee year, and it happened every 50 years. And what happened on that year, on the 50th year, would be that prisoners would be set free. Um, People who had massive debts would be forgiven their debts. Now, this is what our Lord says he wants to to come and do for each one of us. He wants to come and and set us free. He wants to make us feel like we can fly. You know, the soul is something that, that shouldn't be on the ground. It should be able to fly. We should feel sort of released And that joy that comes from that release, from feeling that all of our debts, all of our sins, shall we say, our faults and failings have been forgiven, and finally we can be who God has called us to be. That's what our Lord came for us, and that's why he came. That's why we celebrate his birthday as much as we do. And that's why Isaiah says that that when that happens, we will feel, as he says in the first reading, we will feel like we've been clothed with the garments of salvation, wrapped in the cloak of integrity. We will feel like a bride bride adorned in her jewels. Now, that's why we call this Gaudate Sunday. That's why Isaiah says, my soul will rejoice in my God, because that's what the Messiah came to do. That's why we celebrate his birthday. And so, Today, let's get into the, the Christmas mood. If it's not quite felt like Christmas yet, because of everything that's going on, let's remember that our Lord came down for each one of us and that he wants to wrap us in the robe of salvation. Amen. We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we await with longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us with renewed devotion beseech his mercy. That Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over her always. Lord, in your mercy, that under the protection of Christ our times may be peaceful. Lord, in your mercy, that Christ in his mercy may free all who suffer persecution. Lord, in your mercy. That Christ may find us watching when he comes. Lord, in your mercy. We seek now the intercession of Our Lady as we pray. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, bring salvation to all. Hear the prayers of your people, and may we be directed towards your peaceful rule. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what was begun in sacred mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We use the third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body, blood, and soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The mystery of faith. 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Louis Rabicek, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep safe for eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ. blood of Christ. Amen. Say to the faint of heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, a God will come and he will save us.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, uh, just to remind you that next Sunday, the 20th of December at 6.30 p.m. here at Sacred Heart Church, we've got our carols by candlelight service. Now, uh, just to remind you, it's not a mass. It's just uh, listening to our, our choir sing our favorite carols with readings in between. Now, it strikes me that, that uh, uh, sometimes people don't necessarily come out when it's this cold and this dark. Now, you don't have to book for it, but if you could let us know that you're coming uh, so that we, uh, uh, we, we sort of can have an idea about numbers. Um, so if you're interested, that's next Sunday, uh, the 20th of December at 6.30 p.m. here. Uh, a, a beautiful service will be candlelit the church uh, and listen to our favorite carols and get into the Christmas spirit. So if you're interested, then let us know actually maybe this evening before you go. Now, I will be hearing confessions, as you know, half an hour before this Mass um, next week, but also for a little time afterwards. So if you want to come to confession after this Mass, I will be in the confessional for you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The masses ended. <laughs>